and welcome back to another episode. In this video, I want to introduce you to a man who you probably have never heard of, but he was one of the greatest men in the history of Western civilization, and that man is William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce was an English Member of Parliament and a social reformer. He was first elected in 1780. His main claim to fame, if people actually remembered him, was that he played a huge role in ending slavery as well as being an advocate for social reforms that today we kind of take for granted. With regard to slavery, the one point I want to stress and really get through to you is that slavery was a universal, worldwide evil. It was not a product of the West in any shape, way, or form. It was practiced in some form from the beginning, from even before recorded history. So you had slavery, slavery in ancient Mesopotamia, in Babylon. Native Americans practiced slavery. The Romans practiced slavery. Ancient Indian cultures practiced slavery. All throughout the African cult continent practiced slavery. And the reason why, as an institution, it was so prevalent throughout the history of the world was that in pre in pre industrial societies work is actually really hard living is really hard so what do you do well one thing you can do is you can enslave somebody else and that makes life a little bit easier it's not the correct thing it's not a good thing but that's the way it was um the author eric Metaxas. Um, wrote a book called Amazing Grace, and there's actually a link to it um, below in, in the description, um, about the life of William Wilberforce and his battles against slavery and for social reform. But with regard to slavery, this is what, what the taxes has to say. Slavery was as accepted as birth and marriage and death, was so woven into the tapestry of human history that you could barely see its threads, much less pull them out. Everywhere on the globe, for 5,000 years, the idea of human civilization without slavery was unimaginable. Now, in the life of William Wilberforce, he, very early on in his life, um, came and inherited some money, so he was actually quite comfortable. And in his early 20s, he lived a life that most 20-year-olds might have lived. You know, he gambled, he drank. And although he was a very personal person, people generally very much liked him. Um, he was just kind of, you know, a regular guy. But as he approached his 30s, he underwent a spiritual conversion and became a Christian, or what we might call today a born-again Christian. He, became, he decided to dedicate his life to God. And this was a quote that is attributed to William Wilberforce. God Almighty has set before me two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and the ref reformation of manners. Because in his view, especially the slave trade was against the will of God, and he was willing to use all powers at his dis disposal to try and end it. And this is a major thing, because he's just one guy, and slavery as an institution has been around forever. Every culture is practicing it, including his own, and yet, it doesn't matter, because he had his beliefs sprung from his Christianity that he, that he hung to. So, from that point on, he started to campaign against the slave trade. And as a member of parliament, even though he was only a backbencher, he was, a, he was independent, and he would constantly pass anti-slavery motions in parliament to draw attention to the issue. He would also work with other groups tirelessly, producing pamphlets, books, rallies, and petitions, trying to build a critical mass of support to end the institution. And lo and behold, through his efforts, the slave trade was abolished in 1807. And when I say the slave trade was abolished, this means the actual transportation of slaves to and from various places. And this was enforced by the Royal Navy, who from then on would view slave ships um, as, be, as being the same as pirate ships, which means the crew and the ships themselves could be sunk. 
Now, slavery as an institution itself was actually ended then throughout the British Empire in 1833. And William Wilberforce died shortly after this act was passed. The point I want to make again, though, is that this is the first time in history that any civilization has taken a stand against slavery and actually ended it. And it was Western society that, that did this. It wasn't the Chinese. It wasn't, again, it wasn't the Indians. Um, William Wilberforce, though, aside from ending slavery or being one of the major forces to end slavery, was also a great social reformer. Because in that time, there was a great deal of rot in the nation, as I believe Adam Smith put it. So, for example, during his time, 25% of single females were whores. And really, they did that, I suspect, because they had no other choice. The average age was 16. Brothels would op openly advertise in London that they only that they offered girls under the age of 14. The Prince of Wales himself was celebrated for, for betting over 7,000 women. And it was the kind of society at that time where a good man could walk by an 11-year-old prostitute and simply accept it. However, due to the efforts of William Wilberforce and some of the other social organizations that sprung up to try and change this, by the 1890s, you still had child prostitutes, as unfortunately we have them today, but you also had charities, improvement societies, and orphanages, which all sprung up in an effort to, to change it and to reduce and to reduce the practice. And Wilberforce was behind many of these. So he himself would fund societies that pr promoted sobriety, education, reading, personal hygiene, religion, as well as anti-animal cruelty. Now, the other point I really want to make is none of these positions were easy to take at the time. And the sad part, sad truth is that most people just didn't care. Um, in the movie Amazing Grace, which concerns William Wilberforce, there are a number of scenes where, where William Wilberforce is, is seen chanting and saying, no, the people will have their way. The, the, the people, um, well, you cannot fight the power of the people kind of thing. But the truth is, is that most of the people just didn't care. Then, as today, most people are easily distracted by frivolity. So most people care more about you know, sports or entertainment or gossip rather than major issues. And this kind of shows you, I think, that history is, is often decided by that 1% that take action. Once that 1% get their way, then maybe a whole bunch of other people kind of come in behind it as Johnny come lately and get behind it. Nonetheless, one person can make a huge difference. And nonetheless, he persisted. Now, there are some modern critics of Wilberforce, which I should mention, because nobody's perfect. And in William Wilberforce's cases, this involved the colony of Sierra Leone, which was actually a free colony in Africa that Wilberforce established. Now, the theory of this colony was it was supposed to be a model society in which different races um, could live together. And the idea is that when um, slaves were freed from the slave trade, um, they could be brought to Syria alone to live as free men. That was the theory. But in practice, and that's what his critics point out, is that a form of slavery still continued under, under what was called the apprenticeship program, where essentially people who lived in Sierra Leone could basically buy a freed slave for $20 and then they would then apprentice under them for 14 years before getting their real freedom. And, and that sounds a bit like slavery, it, because it is. And the critics would, would say that Wilberforce knew about this, uh, but did nothing. But my take on it is that, unfortunately, in the real world, politics is a messy business. And in order to achieve his grand ad ambition of the above... Uh, abolition of slavery, he had to make compromises along the way. So he was basically keeping his eye on the big prize, and that unfortunately meant that he had to ignore the
these smaller evils, which will then less evil, but but if he, if he spent all of his political capital there, he would have been less capable of achieving his larger objective. And of course, he eventually did did accomplish his big goal, which was the abolition of slavery throughout the British Empire in 1833. Again, I want to stress just how prevalent slavery was and how important it was that the British Empire, then sort of the, the leading culture of the West, abolished it. I mean, Ataturk, who was a president of Turkey, didn't abolish slavery in Turkey until the 1920s. And if you look at the history of Turkey, Ataturk was very much a Western reformer, who unfortunately, whose legacy now Turkey is unfortunately moving away from. Saudi Arabia officially banned, banned it in the 1960s, although a lot of people would say that it actually still continues to this day. And there still exist pockets of it in Africa Day and other places. And it's basically places where the Western powers never really got any kind of foothold in. So, again, if you want to look at the great liberator or the great ender of slavery, you're looking at Western civilization and men like William Wilberforce. So, the final analysis. William Wilberforce was a living embodiment of a Western man with Western ideals. And the main thing he exhibited was this idea that I, I talked about in my earlier video on the Greeks, which was the idea of critical consciousness, which is key to the West. And it's very much a Western idea that you can question everything at any time. And, and, that, and that in his time was questioning slavery and the general social debauchery of his time. And that is a Western idea that everything is up for debate all, all the time. And he worked against great odds to change them. And one person can make a difference. Um, below, I've got some Amazon links to a book and a movie on Wilberforce if you're interested. And that will help support the channel. But what do you think? Have you ever heard of William Wilberforce before? Did you think that, that slavery was only something that Western countries practiced? Did you know that that virtually every culture in the history of the world practiced slavery and that Western civilization is the one that ended it. Um, I'm kind of curious what you have to think. And that's it for now. So until next time.